Okay, and we're now live with the webinar. Let's just make sure everybody gets in okay. So there's people starting. You're very welcome. Come on in. We'll have a Guinness and stuff and wherever else you might want. Okay, you're very welcome everybody. And I'm absolutely honored to be joined by Marnie and Janine today. And they're going to show you how they've taken some community-based campaigns to build their brand at this time of challenge that we're in. And there are wonderful stories and wonderful results. And I'm going to show you the ABCD to get this stuff done. Marnie. Hi, Ronan. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm good, good. thank you. And Janine, how are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks. Good, good. So, Marnie, tell us a little bit about yourself and your business and where you're based and how long you're in business and the type of photography you do. And Absolutely. So, um, I'm here in um, historic downtown Elizabethtown, Kentucky. <laughs> um, we are, we've been in business for um, 10 years, a little over 10 years, really, but 10 years officially. So we've had a great 10th anniversary year so far. <laughs> it's been really all going according to plan. Uh, we photograph primarily uh, families and high school seniors. And then we do, um, we actually have a, a growing commercial base as well. But families and seniors are really kind of our target market. And you moved into a new studio. When, when was that? We moved in here um, 2016, so four years okay. ago. Okay. And um, we moved from our little 110 square foot home studio into this space, which we um, we renovated um, over the course of about three years. And um, we still live here. It's still our home studio. We call it a hybrid studio because we do have a, a storefront, but we live upstairs in an apartment. And I think you shared a studio tour in the Sync Group, right? So for anyone yes, who's in yeah. Sync as well, they can yeah. visit and have a look around and. Excellent. Absolutely, yeah. So go go look at the sync page. And, uh, Not now, now. Later. Not now. <laughs> later, later, later. There's too much good information coming forward now to go now. Janine, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks. And you're you're in the state of Florida. I am in the Sunshine State. So I um the studio. We're right north of Tampa, Florida. So we're over on the uh, west coast. I was north, south, east, west. The west coast of Florida. Uh, so for those of you guys who are familiar, uh, we have um, our studio, it's a retail studio space, and we focus primarily on children uh, with babies as well, because they fill our children's pipeline. And so we do a lot of themed portraits uh, in our studio, themed, seasonal, birthdays, milestones, things like that. Very and good. families that belong to children, but mostly children. Very good, very good. So the target audience then, for you then is the mum of younger children is that right Correct. yep typically the, children under the age of 10. okay and marnie your target audience is families and seniors do exactly. you target both the senior and the parents of the senior or just the senior or what no we target the senior and the parents of the seniors um we end up usually converting those clients to family clients as well so okay. yeah, so, we go both of those. so bring them in for the senior and sell them the family later or vice versa exactly okay. Okay, very good, very good. Okay, Marnie, we're gonna start with you, so. So, Hi. I absolutely love what you've done. So, tell us what you did, and then we'll get into the how you did it. All right, so um, first, I cannot take full credit for it because um, my friend here, a local photographer named Josh Astor, he's also a teacher. Um, Josh came up with this idea and he's like, hey, do you wanna do this? And I was like, yes, Lee, let me do this with you. So we're doing small business story time. And every single day uh, we are on Facebook. Um, I am on Facebook um, reading stories to kids. Right, so you identified the need that your clients are at home with younger children absolutely bored stiff going mommy and daddy what can i do exactly yeah, yeah. so you said let's give mom and dad a little bit of a break and read them a story every single day exactly so and how long oh go ahead how long would that last that story the stories are lasting usually between usually we're aiming for like 20 minutes or so but sometimes they've gone a little long we started on some chapter books and we're doing like two chapters so we had a couple that went about 30 45 minutes um but we have parents now who were saying this is it's helping them because they can sit one kid in front of in front of the video let them watch the story while they work do homework with the other one and then they can switch so it's been yeah so hopefully it is helping some of them actually make it through these mountains of homework they've got going on very good. So tell us, 
um, there's copyright with books, right? So how did you get over that? Yes. So um, we, the very first set of um, stories that we started working with were the Skippy John Jones books. If you're not familiar with those, you've got to go find them and read them. Do you love Skippy you know, John Jones. Yes. They're the best. <laughs> I love Skippy John Jones. So um, we read all the ones that we had in the house that were still intact because um, my kids had read them so much that a couple of them are missing pages because they've just completely destroyed them. They've read them so much. Um, basically what I did was um, I just went onto Facebook and Judy Schachter is the author of the Skippy John Jones series. So I ran on there and I said, hey, this is what we're doing. Can I have permission to read your books um, on, on Facebook? And I got back almost within an hour, um, I had a reply back to so absolutely. Um, Judy says, go ahead, use the books um, as much as you need to. So that was amazing. We made sure then every time we put those, we were reading, um, every time we posted those stories, we thanked her, we tagged her, we asked people to go like her Facebook page just to be able to let her know that we were grateful that we were able to use those books. Now, um, we realized pretty quickly that my kids are all high school age. So I ran out of, of picture books <laughs> pretty quickly. Um, we don't have those anymore. So I started to look for chapter books that we could use and um, realized pretty quickly that there's some really good books in public domain. So you can go online and just type in your search engine, um, children's books in public domain, and you can get a list. We started with The Secret Garden. And we finished that, I think today, the last Secret Garden is posted today. So the last chapter. Yeah. Um, so, so did these stream live with Facebook Live or did you pre-record them or what? No, I'm pre-recording. I know there are folks who have been doing them live, but um, for me, um, I need to, re to record them. We are downtown on a very busy, very loud street. So I'll be in the middle of reading and all of a sudden, you know, it'll be like some huge you know, motorcycle go by. So I have paused and, you know, had to either redo it or go back and, you know, clip things together and that sort of thing. So did that um, so help I, with productivity then? Were you able to record a whole load, put it in, clip it into sections and then plan out then that they automatically appear on the day at the time? Exactly. So okay. I actually, it's, it's really sad, Ronan. Um, I bring down like three different sweaters because I want them to have the idea that I'm with them every single day. Okay. So I'll come downstairs, I'll bring three changes of clothes <laughs> and sit down. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll read a chapter and then I'll change clothes and then I'll read the next chapter and change clothes. I'm sure people walking by are just like, what is happening in there right now? Um, but it, it works. So I'll, I'll record, you know, a, a series of them in a day and then I can go into Facebook and I am just, I'm just automatically, um, you know, I'm putting the videos in, I'm telling them I want it to play on this day at this time. It's relatively the same time every day. Um, so right around the 10 o'clock, 10, 15 time in the morning. So the parents kind of know when to expect it. They know it's going to come before lunch. And uh, yeah, so we do that pretty much for every single day. So I've got everything recorded up till tomorrow at this point. So tomorrow is done. I'm going to go ahead after we get done here. I'm actually going to go and record the next couple of days just so I have them in the queue. Okay. So, um, they weren't exactly at the same time every day. So how did you let people know? when they were actually going to be on? Was there- So I post them um, on our, our, um, our Claggett Photography Facebook page. And then I go to my own page and I post it there just to kind of boost it out. And then the people who are following it, they're all throwing them out too. So it's been amazing to see the number of people who are sharing these, you know, these silly little story videos, um, but they're, they're going out a whole lot more than I ever thought they would. Very good. So shares, I'm a numbers person, as you know. So just talk to me about numbers and engagement and stuff like that. It's, so I need to, I need to go do like more detailed work, but I went through and I added up um, the number. Facebook will tell you on your videos list. If you go to that page and you just click on the thing and says, show me the videos that I've done. It'll show you the number of minutes that people have been engaged with your videos. So, so far we started this on March 17th. So it's, I think we've had 18 days. I think that's okay. right. 18 days post so far. In those 18 days, we have had um, over 900 hours of engagement. So it's about five hours a day that people are watching these videos. Right. Um, yeah, which is crazy, absolutely crazy. Right, very good. So if 
a potential client of yours sees this story then, um, have you had much feedback from them or have they, have, have they reached out and said, this has been absolutely amazing. I've been able to do, you must have, because you've just mentioned about the homework being done. So yeah. tell us some other feedback you may have had from clients. It's been so much fun. Um, I've actually had, it's funny, I've had a lot of adults who have commented. So I've got a, a lot of adults who are, who are watching without kids. Um, they're just like, oh, this is something for me to do too. <laughs> Which I did not expect. That was a, that was a new thing. But they've been, I, I think, kind of nostalgic for some of those things, and that's been fun for them. Um, I've actually had kids who um, mom hands them the phone, and they're they're literally. Um, I've been told they're they're in their blanket fort with mom's phone. Um, I had one who decided she was going to try to voice message me her um, her comments after one of the days, and so I got this beautiful run on amazing um, little thing from her that was full of emojis and sunshine and it just it made my day uh, but her eyes so I texted her mom and said hey I said did you know that that you know your daughter <laughs> is, is texting me she's like she's like did not know she's like I'm glad it's just you um, but she said oh my gosh no she's right now she's here in her fort um, and she's been out forever she's like I can't get my phone back from her so okay so with any new project stuff goes wrong on occasion right so um, are there any learned lessons that you can share with our audience that if they're going to do it, no, don't do this, do this instead? Or Absolutely. So the first thing first is make sure you get permission. Um, that's the, the big thing. Because um, our very first day, I will totally say that our very first day of Skippy John Jones, I posted it and then went, Woo, copyright, didn't even think about it. So um, make sure beforehand um, you have that. Um, for, fortunately, we were, we were given some grace there. Um, that's the number one thing. Number two is make sure you're doing something with this. Make sure you're converting these listeners into clients, into prospects. Um, I was not doing that. So today we just came up with the idea that we're going to do a little quiz for the folks who have watched it. Um, we may do it at, if they, at the end of the whole book, or we might do like at the end of each chapter and then let them um, submit you know, emails to us that way so that we're able to, to really kind of see exactly who's listening and, and get a little bit more interplay interaction with them. That's an excellent that. idea because it, it, now you're going to capture, they're going to enter a competition by filling out a quiz, is it? So you'll capture their email address and their phone number, whatever their detail. So exactly. you'll be able to follow up with them later and they can go into your mailing list and stuff like that. Yep. Love that idea. Excellent. Exactly. So do you think there'll be a prize then for the winner of that quiz or will everyone Absolutely. be a winner or how will you, how will you run that competition? Do you think? I haven't felt, totally thought it through, but I know that we will will definitely be providing like studio, um, like not studio credit, uh, gift certificates and that sort of thing to the people okay. that are taking, if they're investing that much time and they've gone through the entire book, heck yeah, you can have a free session. <laughs> Let's do that. Um, so those kind of things, we do have a lot of business partners and um, that we're using for um, some other things. We're, we're getting ready to do the stuff that Janine is talking about. And so we've got some folks that have donated prizes for that. So I think we're going to go back and talk to them about doing that for this, for the story time too. Very good. And then maybe they'll start sharing some of those stories or links exactly. to your pages. All the videos exactly. are there, are they? So I can, I can join it at any time and go back to the beginning and follow through. Exactly. Yeah. Everything is still there and still live. Okay. And is it easy for me to follow or does Facebook put them in any particular order or are they in units? It's actually in pretty group easy. Or? If you click on videos, just scroll down to the bottom of that group and you okay. pick them up and they're all labeled with the chapters. So you know exactly which one you're reading. So you make sure you don't get out of order. Okay. And each one lasts what? About 20 minutes? Is that what you said? About 20 minutes. There are a few in there that got a little long. Um, okay. <laughs> and so we've, we've, but they're, but they're better now. They're usually about 20 minutes. Okay. And did you find it difficult reading a book to a camera? Did you find that piece difficult? Because you're used to being the other side of the camera, are you? Is yeah. That the yeah. I, okay. Actually, um, my, my degree um, is in theater and performance studies. Okay. So, um, so you're a one, natural. <laughs> it's right up my alley. It's fun. I, although I will admit, like if anybody from, uh, from Scotland um, hears my Yorkshire accent, they're going to just die it's horrible um but i'm you know i'm not putting a ton of effort into these i will say that <laughs> we haven't been doing my you know i've been doing my dialect research before i started um but did you it's been fun. did you put them on youtube as well or i haven't put them on youtube that's actually a really good idea ronan I it's not my that. idea it's actually janine's idea thank you that's janine's idea yeah 
Thanks, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> We'll be doing that next. That's what's happening after I get done here. I'm going to go, you know, because I need one more thing on my to-do list, as we were saying earlier. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, Janine's a real problem solver. You know, she comes from this software techie background. So she's always trying to figure out other angles on stuff. I know we're long enough now for now on that. <laughs> that right, Janine? Well, she just has such a wonderful voice. It could be a second career, her doing, uh, if people see it on YouTube, you never know. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You could, you could, you could, I think you can put up videos on YouTube where you can say advertisers can put an ad in there, can't you? Yes. There and we then go. You get, you get paid for that. There you go. Another income there source. There we go. I'm going to make we it through the downtime, people. We all want passive income sources when we go <laughs> through experiences like this, right? <laughs> Perfect. Yes. Very good. Janine. Yes, sir. I've never been called sir before. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a school teacher now. <laughs> Do I come across as a school teacher? <laughs> no, 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 no. Although my daughter heard you talking and she's like, what is his accent? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, tell her, tell her that we have little leprechauns over here. Yes. We're all taught how to speak this way. <laughs> um, so tell us about your, your campaign and what you did and where you got the idea from. Okay, so what I did was I came up with a uh, scavenger hunt that parents could have their kids complete at home. Um, most of my clients, as I said earlier, are parents with kids under the age of 10. And their biggest challenge right now is coming up with ways to keep them occupied, um, coming up with fun things for them to do uh, that is safe at home, that they don't have to go out, that they don't need supplies for. Uh, that was another big thing. I wanted to make sure that we came up with something that didn't require them to have to go out shopping. Um, that way that they wouldn't have to, you know, obviously go buy anything. So uh, that was, you know, I was listening to obviously the struggles that I have as a mom of young kids and knowing that my clients shared in these same struggles. So I came up with the idea of doing a photography scavenger hunt uh, and I launched it. It finished up last Friday. So um, what I did was I uh, contacted um, several businesses in my community that would want to participate um for prizes right so i did i wasn't having i have done scavenger hunts in the past where people had to go to different businesses obviously we can't do that now so instead this was um using my business partners um to source the prizes instead um and to be able to then talk about them in my facebook group so i ran the scavenger hunt via my website and my facebook group not my Facebook page. I started a Facebook group so that way people would definitely get the notifications of the, um, the challenges each day. And so same thing as Marnie, I went ahead and created all of, my, um, all of my days ahead of time and scheduled them to go out on Facebook at eight o'clock every morning for a week. Um, something I did do um, is I, um, I had my daughter pre-do them all to make sure that they were things that I might have thought were cool, make sure a kid can actually do them and thought that they were cool too. Um, she scrapped one of my ideas, so, you know. <laughs> so it's probably a good thing I had her test them out. So uh, I highly recommend if you have your own test subjects at home, if you do something like this, have them test out your ideas. Um, and then that way, you know, you won't come across as, you know, too old to be too cool for school, so. Yeah. so Children can range from three years of age to, I don't know, to senior, I guess. Were you, were you focused on a particular age group or how did you handle that? I did. So I, I sort of targeted my idea for children between the ages of like five and 10. Um, knowing that some clients with younger children, parents could help. Or if they had older siblings, the older siblings can help. And that was more my idea. I really wanted to try and have the older siblings if that was the case, help with the, the younger siblings and they can kind of do it as a team. Um, and then I have found too that preteens, like my daughter's a preteen, she's 12. She gets the biggest kick out of stuff like this. Um, and so it wasn't so cheesy like that she wouldn't want to do it. Um, but the age target really was that five to 10. Which is your ideal client Which age. Which is my ideal client, correct. Excellent, so you yes. connected the dots on that one. Yes, so and uh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, no, I'd say, so I set off, um, when I started the scavenger and I had several goals in mind. Um, the first obviously was to build engagement. Um, I wanted to get clients thinking about me since I couldn't be photographing them right now. I wanted people in the community to still think about me. Um, and so that was one, um, goal that I had. 
I, um, I also wanted to build relationships with the other local businesses, like I said. Um, and then I, I wanted, the reason why I chose to do it in a Facebook group as well is I have future plans for that Facebook group, right? So I already have something else starting this week. So my goal is to keep that Facebook group engaged and growing during this time. And then also to be able to keep it going um, once this crisis is over and have an engaged group of people um, commenting in the community with the same age kids. Very good. So you can show us some pictures. I can, all right, we, we practice this. So let's, let's make sure this works. So, all right, let me share my screen. Hold on. All right. Because to you all of us, that, yes, we can. Okay. All right. So let's go here first. All right. So um, this page lives, and I'll kind of tell you what I'm going to do with this as well. So this page now lives as a uh, blog page on, or blog post on my website. Uh, we came up with a logo, and what I ended up doing was um, I created this like magnifying glass camera logo. Uh, with my logo on it. Um, I've taken that off and when we're done with this webinar, I'll figure out with Ronan how to upload this to the Think Tank group. Um, and so that way, if you guys wanna do a photography scavenger hunt, you can just use this icon, um, change it to your oh, um, studio colors and then you'll be set to go. Um, obviously come up with your own hashtag. <laughs> that <laughs> Unless you want them to participate in mine. Uh, but so here's what we did. So, we, so, 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 so hold on for a second now. Oh, yeah. So tell me, the advantage of having your own hashtag on Facebook? Because we don't often see hashtags on Facebook. We see it on Instagram and Twitter and stuff. So ju just tell us about that then. Well, the real, one of the reasons I set up the hashtag was so I could search it, right? Because we were doing prizes and I needed to make sure that people could complete, that people were completing it. Um, and so I did, a while, I did a lot of searching trying to find a, a hashtag that people could remember and easily type in, but one that no one else was using. Um, so if I go into Facebook and I do cloud nine photo hunt, I can find all of the posts that people use with that. So you can put that into the search bar of Facebook and it'll yes. find everybody who used it. Yes. Excellent. Okay. Yes. With you. Yes. Gotcha. Um, so what I, now I'm going to be changing this page this week because what I, the way I had set this up was because I wanted people to not only engage in my Facebook group, but on my webpage. So on this page, every day I had them, I, I updated the same page as we were going along. Now I'm gonna rewrite it to make it evergreen. So here's a seven day scavenger hunt that you can do with your kids at any time. Okay. Right, day one, day two. So I'm just gonna reword a few things here this week. So that way it'll convert now to just an evergreen um, seven day scavenger hunt. Uh, and that way all that work, and I can still have people do it. And at the very end, if they complete it, they can still get, uh, certificate to the studio. Oh, clever. Yes, yes, yes. Right? Make once, use many. I love yes, that. Yes, make once, use many. Way to, to make money. Yes, indeed. <laughs> um, so do you want me to kind of go through each day to give people yeah. an idea? Okay. Do, please. Yeah, just so we get an idea. So uh, unlike a scavenger hunt where you're going around town and one clue leads to the next, I, um, I didn't do that. I did it on a few of them and tied them together, but I really made each day independent. Uh, and because it's school age kids, I tried to like use um, aspects of school. So I did letters, numbers, colors, uh, and things like that to try and hit those different things that they're also learning in school. So day one, um, and this hands down, by the way, um, when I did a survey at the end, what was your kid's favorite day? It was day one, oddly enough. Wow. Um, so I had them get in the pantry and find the letters of their first and last name and then make a digital collage of the letters to spell their name. So here's what Erin did. So she did Erin McLeod. Um, and I'm going to take you over to, um, so the maybe. shorter name you have, the better, right? The shorter name you have, the better. I know. Because my name in, 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 in is Ronan Ryle, R-O-N-A-N-R-Y-L-E. But in Irish, it's Ronan O'Rahil, which is R-O-N-A-N-O-R-A-G-H-A-I-L-L. -L. I'd want to have a big pantry, eh? <laughs> I definitely want to have a big pantry. Um, okay. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's hilarious. Um, now, I will tell you this. If you guys decide to do this, um, what ended up becoming really fun was trying to figure out what food people had taken their letters from. <laughs> so it honestly could have been a secondary scavenger hunt in a way for other people to figure out. Um, because you'll see this as you, I mean, these kids are pretty clever. I, um, 
I was like, ooh, I recognize that M. That's an m and so I'm going to her pantry. Or like the A from the Kellogg's. Like, so it's interesting how you can kind of pick out the, the I is the goldfish, right? Um, and so I thought that was pretty clever. Um, how, and then some kids even got clever too. Like instead of finding um, letters, they actually made letters. That's a bagel, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that clever? So that was Very his good. O. Um, so good. yeah, the, and then they use, I had the, I told him to use a collage software to put it all together into one um, image to post. So yeah, the kids got really clever. And so that was a lot of fun. And then somebody did it old school. <laughs> they cut out the letters. Um, I tell you, isn't it to see the creativity and the learning is. and the, you know, if more of our school had this sort of stuff in it, we'd probably, right? we'd probably, our kids would learn far more. It's amazing. Um, and then some people posted pictures of their kids doing it, right? And so that was fun too. Um, so yeah, so it was just a lot of fun to see what everybody came up with. Look, Oreos, they made me hungry. Cheez-Its, you can and totally tell <laughs> what these packages are. <laughs> so, um, so how did they put it? Did, did you have to show them how to use a particular software or was that easy to use? I, I, in the, on my website, I gave them um, three or I might have given them two. Um, softwares to use. Um, pick collage and then another one. And then people actually commented, hey, my daughter used this one or my son used this one. It was real easy to do. Um, you'd be surprised, Ron. A lot of these kids are already doing it. So they, uh, they, um, that, that, that was pretty easy. But yeah, it was, I just had them download an app. And I told, and actually, good question though, too, because I, um, something I didn't say was I announced I was doing the scavenger hunt like four or five days before actually launching it. Okay. and try and get everybody in and ready to go. And during that time, I did say, you will need to have a digital camera on a tablet or a phone, as well as um, software that you can make collages with. Okay. So they were ready to go and had it all downloaded ahead of time. Okay, so roughly how many people participated on day one? On day if one, I... we had 72. 72, so that's 72 separate families, right? Yes, 72 okay. separate families. Okay, and um, we had 170 people join the group to do it. 170 people. Okay, and how did you get the word out there? So, did the partner, the business that you partnered with for the prizes, did they did they promote this as well, or they did? So, I okay. had um, all the businesses I partnered with shared the post and told people to go join the group. Um, and then I'm in a BNI chapter. Um, I, I don't know if everybody here knows what BNI is, but it's a networking organization. Um, our chapter has like 50 something members. So of the 50 something, you know, half of them are <laughs> engaged and do things. <laughs> so um, I had some of them, um, uh, Andrew asked a question, I'll answer that in a second. Um, yeah. So uh, I had them all share it. Um, of the everybody I asked, about 10 of them actually shared it on Facebook. Uh, so that, those are the main ways. Then I sent an email out um, to my client base, telling them that we were going to be launching and to join the Facebook group or to use the website too. Um, and they would then um, get all the, the prompts and notifications. Okay. So before, Andrew, we will answer your question in a moment, but I just want to ask Janine just something else. So the, the sequence then, so it lasted for seven days and it was yep. a different challenge each day, right? Yes, there was a different challenge each day. Um, and so I'll run you through them really quick, but then you guys can always go to my website if you want to be able to take the prompts and, and you can't come up with the ideas on your own. Um, the second day I had them count how, however many letters were in their first and last name. That's how many nines they had to find in their house. Cloud Nine Studios. So, you know, I kind of tied it together there. Um, and that was fun too. Like I had ideas of what they would do. And then I was surprised with what people found. Um, people go actually on, have show us. I didn't realize show, it. show us what they found. <laughs> so they found the nine there. Um, on day three, we had them get outside if possible. Um, we live north of Tampa um, in a suburb. So people out here, people here, even with stay at home order, can go outside. Um, right. And so uh, most people here, you can walk around your neighborhood, things like that, and do it safely. They have people have big backyards. Um, so I wanted to get the kids outside. Um, to get some fresh air. So we did this one outside. But if you are living in a place where you can't go outside, this challenge could easily be done inside too. And I put if possible, because what if it was raining here, right? So if it was raining, they'd have to do it inside. Rain, does it rain in Florida? 
It does rain in Florida. Does it? I thought Not that was just like an Irish thing. Get rain. <laughs> um, day four. This one was a fun one. Um, it was a go because my son's favorite movie is Toy Story. So I had them go through their house and find how many Toy Story toys they had in their house, and then put them together and, and take a picture. Very good. And then, so that was a lot of fun. Then um, I did how many cameras can you find in your house? So whether it be toy cameras, real cameras, phone cameras, things like that. So you accepted um, a phone as an entry, yeah? What'd you say? You, you accepted a phone as an entry? I did accept a phone <laughs> as an entry. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, day six, this was the other, um, hands down, the second favorite day. And that was a book stack day. Um, I'm a huge reader. I got this idea from Instagram. I follow a lot of um, author accounts and they do these book stacks where they stack books and do different things. And so I did um, find all your favorite kids' books and alphabetize them from A to Z. See if you can find a book that starts with every letter of the alphabet and make a, a stack. Very good. Right? So they got to do a couple of things. They got to hunt for books. They got to tr work with their letters and group them from A to Z. Um, I had some clients, the only letter they didn't have was X. Right. So it was a really tall stack. Um, and then, um, oh, day seven isn't even on here. So I got to update. Day seven was, um, what was day seven? Hold on. No, I forgot. Uh, day seven just ended. So I don't know. What was it? Five, seven. Oh, there it was. Um, okay. Day seven was, um, oh, yes. So to tie it in, um, and this was a little shameless plug for my studio. <laughs> But search the house and find your favorite printed photograph of yourself. Take a picture of you holding your picture. Very good. Right. Very good. So um, I had, it was fun. I had some clients who um, like they did, they held a picture of their baby portrait that I had done. So it was a lot of fun to kind of see um, kids holding their portraits. Right. Very good. So yeah. did you do a daily winner then? No, I didn't no. do a daily winner. Um, okay. What I did was a cumulative winner. So at the end, you can see here, we did a, you made it to the end of the seven day scavenger hunt. Um, and I had this form here. So fill out this form and you will be eligible for drawings for community prizes, but everybody who fills out the form earned cloud $9 um, okay. to spend at the studio. And I put subject to change to spend between June and October. Um, cause okay. I didn't want it to like, hopefully we'll be back working for Christmas. Um, I didn't want it to go into that. I wanted to encourage them to come to the studio right after we're allowed to shoot again. Um, but not, not get into my Christmas season. Okay. And you've captured their email address and their phone number. So you can send them an email when you are open again, yes. get it out to them. And then you can also then phone them and, and try and get that booking in. Yes. And, Excellent. um, Something else that I'm going to do, which they don't even know yet, it's going to be a little surprise, is um, I actually happen to have most people's addresses. There's only two people whose physical addresses I don't have, and I'm going to Facebook message them tomorrow to get those. I'm going to mail out a little congratulations for finishing the scavenger hunt with a sheet of stickers. So I have um, girl stickers and boy stickers um, and uh, like little princesses, dinosaurs, things like that. I'll just kind of mix and match and uh, stick them in an envelope and mail it off to the kids so that way they have some happy mail come with something fun to do. That's amazing. Amazing. I love it. So yeah. there's a, a potential, how many potential um, vouchers have you set, sent out? Did you say a hundred? Um, well, we had 170 people join in. We've only had okay. 25 people fill out the form. So okay. Far. Okay. So, um, I'm going to keep doing little reminders. Uh, I know more than 25 people have finished the scavenger hunt. Yes. Uh, so, you know, whatever the case may be, why they haven't filled the form out yet. But I'll keep reminding them, hey, if you finished it, make sure you fill out the form if you want your cloud $9. Exactly. Um, and put a, put a time limit on it. Yes. Say, by today. By today. Well, by give them today. a little bit. Long. Yeah. But do put a timer on it. You know those, you can get those time clocks that run down. Ooh, that's a good idea. So yes. you can probably get a time clock that you can run down and pin it to the top of the group saying, if you've done the scavenger hunt, you've only got one day, 10 
minutes and whatever seconds left, you know. Right before, yeah. yes, in order to before the cloud nine dollars close out forever. Yes, yes, exactly. And then you you said that um, so your plan then is that you will relaunch this again then for other people. Is that right? Yeah, I'm gonna repurpose the web um, on the this page here on my website. I'm going to repur. I'm gonna keep most of the stuff here with all the prompts, and I'm just gonna change the verbiage so that it can happen. Um, at any time. If people want to run a scavenger hunt with their kids, they can do this. And if they complete it and send us the, like if they go in through and post it and complete the form, then um, they can They'll get their cloud nine dollars. Excellent. Excellent. So lessons learned. Would you change anything if you were doing it again, starting again? So um, if, if I changed anything, well, one thing I will say, uh, and I started this on purpose I don't know how your all's areas are working with school closed and spring breaks and things like that. Um, there was a week window here where all the schools in Pasco County hadn't started yet. Um, everybody, they had shut everybody, they shut the schools down. Um, they had gone to spring break and then they had a week where they didn't do anything before they started online schooling. That's the week I ran it. Cause I figured I knew that parents like the first week coming back to school, were going to be like pulling their hair out, trying to figure out technology, going crazy, trying to figure out schedules. And I figured no one would even pay attention to a scavenger hunt that, that week. So I ran it the week that they were doing nothing. Um, so I highly rec and, and I will say that I did notice that um, families that were in a different County didn't do it cause they were already in school right? Or they were in their first week of school. So I did notice that. Um, and I chose to go for the week that would be most likely my clients, which is the county right here. Um, so I, I give that recommendation to you guys. Try and figure out your school calendar. Um, if they haven't gone on spring break yet, obviously they're not going anywhere for spring break. So it's a, it would be a fun thing for them to do that week. Or ask around and find out when things will be slow. There might be a week that they are were supposed to be doing testing. Now they're not doing testing. Um, and things like that. And so if you can time it to take place during a slower week of online school, I think you'll have more participation. Or if your um, target is toddlers, then it doesn't really matter, right? If you're gonna do the younger kids that aren't in school, it doesn't matter, um, so. So if I'm a parent in your locality at home, tearing my hair out saying, I oh, know the kids are driving me mad. They keep saying they're bored. Is that a word you guys use in America, bored? Yes. Yes. Okay. Just making sure, you know, the difference between English and American, there is subtle differences. So then they're saying, I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm bored. Um, how much time roughly, because you test this with your own children, would the children be occupied doing one of these exercises on the day? It was about a half hour. Half hour. Okay. Yeah. For most of them, a half hour um, from the time, like, um, of course, I didn't time the cleanup. <laughs> I don't know what kind of mess people made in their parents' pantries and stuff, um, but uh, most of them were about a half hour, which I think for that age group is the most you're really going to get. Okay. They and have really short attention spans. And did you have much feedback from the parents of the children involved or... I did. I, I actually asked for it uh, just in case they didn't want to give it to me. Uh, and so as we were going through the day, parents were commenting, oh my gosh, you know, so-and-so had so much fun with this. And they were posting behind the scenes pictures of their kids doing the challenges. So I knew that that kind of kept me going and excited too, because I knew that the kids were having fun. Um, but they, I did, I did ask what their favorite days were so that if I were to tweak it and honestly, to keep it evergreen, I might take down one of the two that, you know, maybe got the least amount of engagement and come up with something else to put there instead. Um, but finding their names and making their names and um, was definitely number one. Everybody said that was their favorite. And then the second one was the um, stacking the um, books. And you said you have a present for everybody who wants it, right? You're going to supply the graphics. Yes. That right? I'm going to supply is? the, um, if you guys want it, you can have that camera with the magnifying glass, um, obviously without my logo on it. So I'll run you just tell me when we're done, how we can upload that layered file to the group so people can download it and change it, change the colors to whatever they want. So, so what we'll do is this will go in as a unit within okay. the Photography Think Tank group. So if you're not a member of that, make sure you join the Facebook group Photography Think Tank and we'll put the files in there as a um, underneath the unit number so people can get them in there. So it, it might be tomorrow when that's done, but in the next 24 hours, it'll be done. Okay. So Janine, um, anything else you want to... Sorry? There we go. 
Um, no scare anything else you want to say about that campaign? Any anything that we haven't touched on? I think so. Um, I I don't think so. Did I hit it all? I think so. I think so. Yeah. Do you think so, Marnie? I think so. Okay. So I'm going to put you two guys in the spot now because you two are really creative. Uh -oh. What's next, Marnie? Oh, that was a funny question. Um, so we are actually, um, we're, we're actually going to do a scavenger hunt started today. So we'll see how that goes. Um, we are thinking about doing some silly videos. So some silly how-to videos. It's not completely formed, but they will be, again, we'll do video. Uh, but thinking about things like how to dress like a princess but we'll do it badly. Um, I'm thinking about how to diaper a cat because um, I figured that's going to go really, really poorly. So those kind of just silly, dumb, I mean, I, it's just entertainment. Our whole goal with this is to be providing some positive, uplifting, fun distractions from all the stuff that we're not getting to do right now. So if I can, yeah, if I can distract people for a little while, I feel like it's, it's worth my time. Brilliant. And Janine? So I have, um, Marty and I are like soul sisters here. So this is going to be fun. I'm glad, I'm glad you connected us, Ronan. Um, so we have a couple of things going. Um, after um, starting today, actually, we're doing a week theme in that group of uh, different activities that kids can learn with photography. So a little bit like Kira was doing, but a little bit different. Um, so this week, my daughter is wildly crazy about stop motion animation. So, uh, and that, and so this is a little bit of an older age group, but she has done it with my four-year-old. So she has helped him to do it with his Legos and his trains and stuff like that. So um, you can go and look at the Facebook group today if you want to see the first one. So this whole week is stop motion animation week. And so Erin actually made a how-to video on her own. Um, and so I'm putting her to work. <laughs> awesome. So she did a how-to video on how to do stop motion animation. And all week, we're going to feature different ideas um, for kids to be able to do. And this one, Ronan, this one takes a lot of time. And that's what I put. I was like, so if you want to occupy your kids for like an hour or two, stop motion animation is the way to go. Um, because they stay focused. And it, it, it does take a long time to do all of the little images. Um, so that's what we're doing. So each week will be a different type of activity, photo activity, um, for them to learn and build on. And then... We're also, and this I just started working on over the weekend, so it's not formulated yet. We're going to be doing a journal. Um, so part of my why, as Ronan knows, is I have, I'm obsessed with people not forgetting anything. And so I don't want people to forget this time either. I feel that we are living through history, and our kids are living through history. And I, I remember my brother was in the, he was a sergeant in the Army during the Gulf War. And I had kept a scrapbook during the Gulf War when I was in high school, of all the newspaper clippings, the cards he sent to us, everything. And I still have that. And it means a lot to me that I have that. And so I want my kids to make a journal of being, you know, being quarantined and staying at home. Because I think when they're older, it'll be something that means a lot to them. So that's something I'm formulating right now on how to walk my clients through having their kids journal um, this time period. With photos too, of course. With photos too, of course. I love it. I love it. Does anyone have any questions for us? For us? If you have any questions, just put it in. I don't know if any, any of us has been looking on Facebook. I have a quick look here to see if there's any questions on Facebook. Um, I'm probably in the wrong place. I, I'll break this now when I try and do this. Wait till you see. Um, I should get Marnie to sing a song or something, seeing as she's... We'll stop you. <laughs> say I can't actually see anything in there I'm sure it's fine there must be no questions if they do they'll come on to the webinar the next time right and um, so question for you two so have you done anything about getting PR for what you've done actually today um, and I've been meaning to do it for a while but I, I'm a procrastinator some days when it comes to this um, I went ahead and emailed um, the newsrooms for our um, the Louisville um, television station, the news station, um, and said, hey, this is what we're doing. Um, if you want to talk more about it, let me know. We'll see if anyone contacts us back, um, but hopefully it'll be, you know, just a little bit of something there um, just to kind of help, you know, spread this out to more people. Very good. And Janine? 
So uh, same thing as Marty. God, I got so involved in the creating of this that I was a bad, bad PR person and didn't post anything out um, to our local news groups. But um, it is something that I actually do want to do. Um, and I will continue. I will. I have my same thing. I have the list of all the people. Um, last year, we did a... Um, um, Lord, sorry. My child just threw something at the glass. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, the dangers of doing this. Could you hear that? Like, you heard something. Are they okay? <laughs> Is that your car they've just driven into the garage? <laughs> no, we have a huge sliding glass windows right here between here and the pool, and my son just threw a giant watering can at them. Okay. Okay. <laughs> sorry. Um, okay. I'm going to get my train of thought again. Um, anyways, so yes, we um, last year we did when the Tampa Bay Lightning went to the Stanley Cup um, playoffs. We did free um, pictures at the studio for um, to social media pictures for people to post of them in their Lightning gear and things like that. And that had gotten picked up by the news. So I have all those same. And I, so I got I made um, a PR contact or a press release contact list from that of everybody to contact. So I will do that this week and say we did the scavenger hunt and now we're going to be doing these week long activities um, to try and get the news out there. Um, Very good. Very good. So there is a couple of questions in. Hello, Richard. Good to see you. Um, Richard where, asks, where can I find details of the animation? So you just want to briefly give another three minutes, Janine, on what oh, the animation sure. project is? So um, the stop motion animation, actually, you can go to my website too, um, Richard, and you'll see the video that I put up on there. So if you go to, um, here, I'll type it. Can I type it in here? All panelists and attendees. Um, if you go to, <coughs> oops. Uh, if you go to my website and go, it's the first blog post now will be um, the stop motion animation and you can see that. But if you Google stop motion animation, um, there's a lot of tutorials online um, if you wanna learn how to do it yourself or get a 12 year old to teach you how to do it. That's what I did. <laughs> That's what I do as well. I get my kids. I I'm, haven't been on Instagram. So this weekend I set myself the task of trying to figure out Instagram. So I've been annoy annoying my daughters all weekend. Now, what does this button do? And what does that button do? So if you see some funny posts or posts that don't look right on Instagram, I'm only learning. Okay. So please forgive me. Um, okay. So is there another question here? So yeah. So Kella, Kella, I think, or Kayla. Uh, what are some ideas for translating these types of ideas for engaging older groups of people? For example, high school seniors for senior photo talks, couples for weddings, etc. Any idea? Kelly. Thank you, Kelly. Any ideas? Yeah, um, so we're, uh, we've, we've started working on um, our scavenger hunt, um, like Janine's doing. Um, we have it divided into two different age groups. So our older age group um, I, I just ran things by my high school kids and said, hey, does this sound dorky or does this sound fun? And they're very sweet to me. <laughs> and so I got a lot of, this sounds fun. I did get one, you know. I don't know that everybody's going to want to do that one. Um, but that's that's one way. Go to your kids. Go to your senior, um, you know, your senior model group or whoever it is that you have and say, what do you think? Is this going to be fun? Um, do you want to do this? Are you interested? Does that make you want to to join up with this and just tell them you're my trusted little group and um, you know take the think tank you know, title and say hey you want to be my think tank and let's brainstorm together what we can do um, they love to get involved and to have something to do right now especially something creative to do and for those who are in the UK who might know so when we say seniors in the US it's high school seniors so they're in their final school of what we would call secondary school yes. yeah. okay excellent uh, Keith asks, what of these programs do you plan to continue after quarantine ends? Oh, story time may have to last um, for a little while. It may go to a weekly thing, but I still, I'm having so much fun with it um, that I may, I may keep it up. We'll see what I have energy for. Um, hopefully I will be overrun with clients at that point and I won't have time to do story time, um, but we may make it a priority anyway. And Monica has the word swag. Um, so if Monica isn't in the US, swag is um, when you get a bag with gifts in it, pens and all that sort of stuff. You guys call it swag. Because when I first went to, I think our first show ever was Sync. Um, and Darty said, have you anything for the swag bag? And I was going, 
what's a swag bag? So um, I think that might be the question from Monica. If it is, that's what the is answer. The um, she just says word swag. So I'm presume she's asking what what does that word mean? I don't know. Sorry, there is an app called. Oh no, it's not. See, I'm totally wrong again. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Sorry, there's an app called Word Swag to use to create digital marketing. She said. Oh. Thank you for that, Monica. Cool. See, I got you totally wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, um, Andrew, uh, what am I using to collect the winner's details? Um, I use, I'm just using my email. Um, so I use Mad Meanie is what I use for my email, um, like my e-blasts and stuff like that and my e-newsletters. So I created a form through Mad Meanie and I linked to that form and it goes into a, a mo I think pretty much all email managers can make groups of clients, right? I learned this from Jonathan. So I have a- So tell them all that they'll have to do, when we open up the BSA membership group, yeah? yeah. They will have to join it because we're gonna have a very special offer for just to think thank people, one month. It's hopefully it'll be later this week. Um, Janine was one of our first people to go through the whole BSA stuff la last fall, uh, last autumn for us Europeans. Um, so. Jonathan taught you then how to do this, right? Yes. This yep. Picture. And okay. so obviously the whole purpose of all this is lead generation, right? So that when we can photograph again, we have a group of people who are now addicted to us and what we're doing. Um, and we can then market to them, right? So um, I have in my uh, Mad Mimi email, I created a group that said people who completed the photo scavenger hunt, essentially. And so, um, and then I created three follow-up emails that are automatically scheduled to go out to them. So when they finish the scavenger hunt, the first one they get is, thank you so much for completing the scavenger hunt. We hope you have, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, and here is your $100 cloud $9 that you can use between such and such and such and such a date, blah, blah, blah. And then I have two more emails scheduled out like three days apart. That is just some information about the studio, some fun things, uh, the virtual hug, um that you have and so that way it, it, it's staying on top of mind so that was one of the big things i learned from jonathan going through that was if you're going to collect all these people you have to nurture them right so um they're coming into the system and then staying nurtured very good so janine just by we didn't set this bit up but i have to ask you and um, people might know you're a published author you don't have a copy of your book there do you that you can show us or um I do somewhere. Go on, go find it. See, I'm putting her on the spot now. Uh, no. You've shared such wonderful information. I do. Keep talking. I know where they are. Hold on. Okay, a we'll keep talking. Marnie, have you written the book yet? I'm working on it, actually. Are you? Because I, I want know. to do it. But again, I, th I thought now would be the ideal time. But the think tank is just yeah. exploded. So I haven't had a minute to even look at it. But um. <laughs> I've, yeah, I've gotten like the introduction part written. A lot of it's kind of sketched out already, um, okay. but it's so funny watching Janine go back and forth. Um, <laughs> I have it sketched out and they've started, um, but yes, yeah, so I'm doing basically my, my whole thing is home studios. I'm really passionate about um, photographers keeping as much money in their pocket as they can. So um, okay. yeah, so I'm working on a book about home studios. Very good. Very it's good. And is that, out. and it's the um, business side of home studios, is it? Yes. 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 Okay. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. okay. Very good. Janine, show us your book. Uh, it's going to be backwards though, right? But um, oh, it's good. Yes, I did. I wrote a book called Don't Blink, and it's about capturing your child's story through portraits. Uh, and it's written again um, to, the, to the mother, right? On how to photograph your child from birth through high school graduation, the important milestones to capture, um, how to talk to your professional photographer about capturing them, um, and then tips and tricks on what to do at every session. Oh. Very good. And yeah. if we want to buy that, we can get it on Amazon, can we? You can get it on Amazon. Okay. So, so we might put at the end of this, when we post this recording, you can, will you go ahead and post a link to it on Amazon? I so will. People I'll can post find a link it. to Amazon. And that's my beautiful daughter surrounded by pictures of her growing up. Ah, that's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. So is there any more questions? What is Janine using to collect the winner's details? Thanks. Oh, yep, yeah, I already answered that one. Yeah, you answered that one. So Andrew, the answer is in the recording somewhere. Would you just say it again, Janine, just in case? Um, no, I was answering it. Oh, you me. answered them already. Oh, I apologize. I'm sorry. sorry. I, read it I apologize. You read. Okay. So I think that's it. I just want to thank you guys so much, Marnie and Janine. You are absolutely marketing geniuses. 
Um, you've thought about the situation we're in. You have come up with campaigns to keep you front of mind with clients while your studios aren't open. And the, the, the photographers and the businesses who do that, they're the ones when we come through this and we are going to come through it, that are going to take off the fastest. And more so, thank you so much for sharing with other photographers around the world who can literally take these concepts, adapt them for them and go and do it. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Take care. And tomorrow we have the social media team coming back to us. So under Brian Welch and his team. On Wednesday, we have Tony Corbell and photographers from the commercial world. And we have photographers who specialize in photographing architecture and hotels. So a really inter interesting group. On Thursday, we have Ellie Cassidy with the newborn team coming. Um, and we will probably have a surprise on Friday as well, just waiting to finalize that for you. So bye, t bye today from the Think Tank. Thank you so much again, guys. And we'll see you all again soon. Bye for now. Bye, bye guys.